Jesus, look! On the statue's head! Mario? Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today, we're counting down our top picks for the top 10 hardest Super Mario games. For this list, we'll be looking at Mario games that pushed our platforming skills to the max. Mario games are usually geared towards a more family-friendly audience, but at times, some of these games break this mold and really challenge us. Two games that didn't quite make our list, but are worth mentioning, are Super Mario Maker 2, which is only difficult when it comes to user-created levels, and Super Mario Bros. 35, since we really can't play it anymore, thanks to Nintendo. Do you agree with our list? What do you think is the hardest Mario game? Let us know in the comments. Yes. Before we continue, we publish content all week long. So be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Super Mario Galaxy 2. Gravity can be hard to adjust to, and that's one of the things that makes Super Mario Galaxy 2 so difficult. Platforming on its own can be difficult. Now try it while spinning around on a sphere and dodging enemies. After a while, the gravity mechanics will start to feel great, and you'll eventually master it. Once you master it, it's time to test those skills with one of the hardest challenges in a Mario game, the Grand Master Galaxy. <laughs> This level throws everything at you. Yoshi sections, tile puzzles, 2D platforming, classic platforming, and those insanely difficult blue gravity stars. Oh, did I mention there is also a challenge for doing all this with one life? Yeah, it's pretty hard. Super Mario Land. <laughs> This may be a bit of a weird pick, but Super Mario Land is tough. Not really in the traditional gameplay sense, but more due to the game being on the Game Boy. Platforming on the little green screen is the true challenge. Super Mario Land attempted to bring what made the original Super Mario Bros. so spectacular to a handheld. The only problem was it just didn't. The Game Boy screen was pretty small, and Super Mario Land played somewhat slower than its home console counterpart. And why do the fireballs bounce? Super Mario World <coughs> Super Mario World is one of the best examples of an excellent difficulty ramp. The first world will show you the ropes and some new additions to the game. Each level will slightly ramp up in difficulty by adding new items, enemies, and mechanics. With each new world, you'll be learning more and more, and just like most Mario games, the final world will test your skills and knowledge. Super Mario World also has a bunch of secrets, and messing around and finding them will truly test you, mainly in exploring what seems like a linear level. Super Mario 64. <laughs> Was Super Mario 64 always difficult? Hard to say. It was the first entry in the Mario series in full 3D, which threw people off as it was a bit of a learning curve. Today, however, Super Mario 64 is starting to feel somewhat archaic. As game design evolves, some of the choices made in 64 seem to be a bit obtuse, especially if you plan on going for all 120 stars. Now don't get me wrong, Super Mario 64 is a great game, but we have to be honest with ourselves and admit, it's hard mostly because it hasn't aged all that well. <laughs> Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island. With Super Mario World showing what 16-bit platformers should play like, let's take the sequel and switch up the gameplay. Yoshi's Island ditches Mario as the main protagonist, so we lose the tight platforming and instead are equipped with a more floaty jump or flutter. Mario is still here, and that's what makes it so difficult. Keeping Mario on your back and not in a floating bubble can prove to be a challenge at times. 
Just like keeping that little baby quiet, completing the game is tough. Each level is full of collectibles and secrets for you to find, basically making it a 2D collect-a-thon. Will someone please shut that baby up? <coughs> Super Mario Bros. 3 The first three Mario games were some of the hardest Mario games to date. Super Mario Bros. 3 is probably the easiest of the trilogy. However, that doesn't mean it's a cakewalk. For starters, the game continued the tradition of slowly ramping up the difficulty as you progress through it. Each world changes massively, not only with the theme, but adding new items and secrets for players to find. So what actually makes it easier compared to the first two? The world map allows players to skip a few levels if they choose, and with the addition of an inventory, players can start levels with items they were granted from minigames. <laughs> Mario Sunshine The most unique Mario game in terms of gameplay. Super Mario Sunshine is quite hard. Sure, this is a traditional 3D platformer, but there's a twist. The addition of Flood, your water jet pack thingy, or the A Flash Liquidizer Ultra Dousing Device. This small addition adds so much more to the simple platforming we expect after Super Mario 64. If you're looking for more traditional platforming levels, no need to worry. Sunshine has levels that are just that, difficult yet excellent platforming stages. Now if you're a completionist, you'll have a harder time. Some of the collectibles are very hard. I'm looking at you, blue coins. This can easily be fixed by using a guide, but if you use one, I'll be judging you. New Super Luigi U. It's hard to believe that one of the new Super Mario Bros. games is hard. Well, I suppose it technically isn't a new Super Mario Bros. title, but New Super Luigi U is indeed tough. The new Super Mario Bros. series brought back classic 2D platforming and aimed it at a broader audience, easy enough for kids, but traditional enough for fans of the classics. With New Super Luigi U, this changed. While it shares the same basic aesthetic, Luigi plays completely different than Mario, with a bit of float to his jump and some slip to his running. On top of this drastic change in controls, the levels are quite hard. This is the perfect example of quality, not quantity. New Super Luigi U has a smaller set of levels that are some of the best from the new Super Mario Bros. series. Now let's stop platforming with Luigi and go hunt Ghost. <laughs> Super Mario Bros. Usually, the first game in the series isn't the best, but the first Super Mario Bros. could easily be called the greatest game in this long-running series. Super Mario Bros. started the long-going tradition of Mario games difficulty ramping up perfectly. The first Goomba showed players that these guys are bad and that we can jump over them or on them. With Super Mario Bros. being the first game in the series, and a classic NES game, of course it's hard. No continues, once you lose all your lives, you're back at the beginning. Each level gets harder and harder, with World 8 testing all your skills. You spent the last two months of your summer vacation just to beat this game. Ah, uh, what a great summer. Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels It's pretty well known, the Super Mario Bros. 2 we got in North America isn't the real Super Mario Bros. 2. The true Super Mario Bros. 2 was deemed too hard for North American players. Instead, we got our Super Mario Bros. 2, which was a reskin of a Famicom game called Doki Doki Panic. We did eventually get the true Super Mario Bros. 2 in the amazing compilation Super Mario All-Stars as Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels. Lost Levels took everything we learned in the original Super Mario Bros. game and cranked it to 10. Jumps were wider, platforms were smaller, and they added wind. 
Hands down, Lost Levels is the hardest Super Mario game due to all these changes. Sadly, I couldn't beat this during my summer vacation. Did you enjoy this video? Check out some other clips from Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.